Welcome to the Buffalo Up Podcast. Today we're going to uh, take a look at what it looks like to engage the culture while at the same time protecting your testimony. Your testimony is so valuable. It is the only thing that the Lord has left us with, and we're going to be excited to present this information to you today. Amen. We want to be in the world, but not of the world. All right. Buckle up. Good evening, everyone. Welcome again to the Buckle Up Podcast. We are so excited that you all have joined us again tonight. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to uh, continue our conversation that we had from last week as it uh, relates to impacting the culture. I'm Pastor Joe Field. Uh, this is uh, Minister Simone Milton uh, uh, w- with us again today. And we're again, we are just so happy, so excited that you all are here. Our podcast is designed with you in mind. Tonight, we're going to tackle a uh, subject uh, that talks about how to impact the culture without losing your testimony. Uh, We're called to be in this world, but not of the world. Right. So in light of that, uh, Simone, if you will, help us understand what it looks like uh, uh, to be in the world, but not of the world. When you hear that type of language, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? Um, when you hear that type of language? Well, the first thing I think of is the exact opposite of being so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. Okay. And by that, it's like you can still have your relationship with God, have your testimony intact without being so disconnected from the people around you that you're unapproachable. Mm. So as opposed to being so earthly minded that you are no, I'm sorry, so heavenly minded, That you're no earthly good, mm-hmm. uh, there needs to be this picture that we always have that Christ left us in this world, right? right. To impact it, right. not to alienate it, not to ostracize ourselves, but to be a part of it. You know, we're to be social. Yeah. Uh, we are to uh, have a recreational life. Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're supposed to uh, have an occupation. Mm-hmm. And all these things are not done in a vacuum, right? They're not. They're done uh, out in the public square. But the question on the floor is, how do we engage and interact with this world Mm -hmm. 24 hours a a day, 168 hours a week, Mm -hmm. without losing our saltiness, without losing our testimony? Because the scripture tells us, Jesus tells us himself, that in in Matthew chapter 5, he told us that we are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. And if the salt loses its flavor, right, Mm -hmm. how is it going to be seasoned? Right. So the question is, how is the earth, the world, going to be seasoned with the love of Christ if we're not salty, right? Right. So so what are some of the ways we can make sure that that, that we're still salty, if you will? Salty in a good term, not salty. Right, not salty. Because we're mad, bitter, upset, (laughs) you know, he's salty. No, no, we're salty uh, because... Uh, salt was used as a preservative, right? Yes. In ancient days and even not so long ago, uh, still they used salt to cure meats and ham mm-hmm. and whatnot uh, to keep it from rotting and decay. Right. So the implication is, right. if you and I keep our testimony in check, mm-hmm. then we are the agents of salt that God is using to keep the world from decay. Absolutely. So what would the world look like if we were not here? If our testimony was jacked up, tore up from the floor. It would be more decayed than what it is now. Talk about it. It would be more of a mess than what it is now. And to answer your question is like, what does that look like being salty? Christ gave us examples all throughout the scripture. And we look at the gospels, how he interacted with people. You know, he didn't just go to the temple. Mm -hmm. He went out and he he would eat with, you know, the tax collectors and, and all these different people who were not, you know, church folk. Right, right. But he didn't lose who right, he was right. in that process. So we really need to look at the life of Christ and how he did things. And most importantly, allow the Holy Spirit to guide us in how we interact with people. So it's important that our testimony stays intact. Absolutely. Uh, and it does us no good to emulate the world, right? 
None at all. If we're trying to impact the world. Right. It is especially the church. The church, church, we must realize that what God has given us is authentic. Mm-hmm. It's real. Right. So we don't have to go out and 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 emulate anything that is not of God. Uh, we don't have to bring the circus to the church to draw a crowd, right? We don't. Uh, I don't have to bring uh, uh, things <laughs> that are not of God into the church, right? right? In order to draw somebody, right? Because whatever I use to draw them, I'm going to have to use it to continually keep to keep them, right? And Christ said, if you lift Him up, come on. He would draw all men, women, boys, and girls into himself, right? right, right. So we don't need secular entertainment. Don't uh, we don't need things that are not godly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I don't want to bash anybody, but I keep remembering this New Year's Eve celebration uh, that a church had in Atlanta where they mm-hmm. were walking it out and 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 just it just turned the club into a church, right? It yeah, turned the church, church into a club, right? Right. And 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 I just I don't know about you, but my 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 spirit just kind of vexed me. It vexed me a little bit. Yeah. Because the same thing that it took to get those people there, it's almost like you're trying to trick somebody that likes yeah. Jesus. It's a gimmick. Tell me about it. So, well, what you do to get them, you're going to have to do to keep them. So what's the next thing you're, you're going to do to try and keep them entertained? Because yeah. ultimately that's what it becomes. Right. It's like, are you coming because you have a hunger for for truth yeah. in the things of God? Or are you coming because, oh, this is a different church. Are they doing all this kind of stuff? Yeah. And whereas that may be entertaining, I also don't want to give you this idea that the church is not serious and it's not that different. And it's not that yeah. my brother had this thing. There was this church that we know of that mm-hmm. did a whole bunch of different things like that. He called the church light. L-I-T-E. Church light. <laughs> like you're not really the church. Like like, like church dad, like that. Right. Cult. Exactly. Instead of because it would it <laughs> their whole theme or their whole um for lack of a better term, gimmick was to reach the unchurched, but the yeah. ways that they did it sometimes pushed the boundaries yeah. a little. Now, I heard another popular bishop, potentate, pastor <laughs> saying that he wanted to lead his church into growing and selling marijuana so they would draw black men to them. Mm-hmm. As if black men can only be drawn to something, to the things of God, through marijuana. Right. So now, how does that impact, in your opinion, how does that impact the image of the church? How does that impact the image of Christ? It's the classic. Our testimony, if you will. It's a classic case of the foolishness that you get when you try to mix the sacred and the profane. Yeah. And, you know, when we talk about how we are seen by the world, we're supposed to be holy. We're yeah. supposed to be separate and right. other. Yeah. It does not mean that I can't mingle and talk to and have relationships with sure. people outside the church. Sure. But when I start to do the same things that you do, that's when we have a problem. I remember you teaching a Bible study years ago and uh, you took the chair out and you stood on the chair mm-hmm. and you had one of our personal trainers sure. in the church stand there and you told him, Okay, um, lift up the person. Yeah, li- lift. lift up the person. Yeah. And, you know, he's a strong guy. He's trying to lift them up. And all you had to do was just yank, and he was down off. Yeah. It's like, so it's so much easier for yeah. you to pull me out of where I'm supposed to be right. than it is for me to get into your foolishness and try to pull you up out of it. And the scriptures is clear on that because the scripture says that evil company, mm-hmm. right, corrupts good manners. Right. Now, so it's important that, that, that somebody's going to have to lead, right? Right. If there's nobody leading, then then it's just a stalemate. Mm-hmm. But it's never a stalemate because somebody's always leading. Right. Either I'm following you or you're following me. Right. The question on the floor is, but how do I, as a as a as a Christian, as a man who 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 loves the Lord, who loves people, and who find value in the faith, how do I keep my testimony from being seen as as hypocritical, mm-hmm. uh, as as not for real. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so how do I do those things? Is 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 what we're trying to to to, to flesh out tonight, right? Right. Right. So, right. so, so help, help us understand that a little bit more, if you will, too. I would say in those situations, it it's not some big agenda that we have written down, but it's a series of choices that we make every day. Um, and there are choices that we will make that we don't see as a big thing, but they will mm-hmm. look like compromise eventually. Yeah. Yeah. They may not look like it at the beginning. It's yeah. like, oh, well, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. 
And it's like people are, I think it's important for us to realize that people are always watching what we do because we are different. Mm -hmm. The Lord said that we're holy. We're set right. apart, right? We're set apart. So, so when I think about this, I, I, I remember I, I read that being in the world, but not of the world as a Christian, mm -hmm. it means navigating the challenges mm -hmm. and the temptations of the world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. While remaining faithful to God and living according to his principles. Right. So these things are going to come. Right. So, so for instance, if I decide to go to a concert, and I do love to go to concerts. I, I, I love live music. Yes. And I, like, I like going to concerts. Uh, when, I, when I go to the concert, I'm not going to be there as though I have no biblical and, and, and spiritual and Christian values right. that I'm still upholding, right? Mm -hmm. So now, uh, as it relates to my testimony, uh, if you see me somewhere, if I'm at a party, I love to dance with my wife. I'm going to dance like mm -hmm. I'm gonna, and have a good time. But if anything that I'm doing, if it makes you stumble, mm -hmm. if it makes you think less of the Lord, if you make right. you think anything less of, 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 of me as a man of God, mm -hmm. then I'm going to take a back seat right. and not do that because you don't have the spiritual maturity to really handle what I'm doing. Not right. that it's a sin, right? Right, exactly. Not, it's not a sin for right. me to dance and, and, and have a glass of wine with my wife. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. a sin for me to, 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 to go to concerts. None mm -hmm. of that is a sin, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As long as it's not a sin, as long as it's not illegal, mm -hmm. because if it's illegal, then that's a good possibility that I can end up in state and federal court, and that ruins my testimony. Yeah, it does. If it's unethical, mm -hmm. there's a good possibility I can end up in civil court. Mm -hmm. And that ruins my testimony. Right. If it's if it's immoral, then there's a good chance I'm gonna end up in God's court. Right. And that ruins my testimony. Right. And if it's a sin, it's just totally something that right. we shouldn't be a part of, right? Right. So so help me kind of work through this again as it relates to uh uh this world that we're living in, right? It's not going anywhere. It's not. It's not getting any better. It's not. It's so how do, worse. We, how, do, how do we navigate? How do we navigate? Yes, right. Getting worse. I think we have to be aware from the beginning that there are two different worldviews that are happening here. Mm -hmm. The world's worldview is, you know, do what you will. Do, you know, you are the master of your own ship, all that kind of stuff, right? Whereas as believers, we should have a Christian worldview, which is going to work opposite of what the world is saying. You know, they're saying you got to step on top of people to get to the top. Right. And, and we're taught, you know, to be a servant, you know? Yeah. And so being mindful of what it is that we say we believe and how we should be living should shape how we think, how we interact, how I talk to people. So when the person at work is being crazy with me, I was thinking about this today because somebody yesterday did something real crazy. And I'm like, nah, I could tell you about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but I just finished doing this podcast where we say we're not doing all these kind of things, right? <laughs> right. And so I, I had to be mindful yeah. of how that's going to come across and who is watching yeah. how I interact with that person. I let her chill out. Yeah. And believe it or not, before the day was over, she came to me and said, hey, I did hear yeah. what you said. Yeah. And you know, uh, one of the ways that we can protect our integrity, we can protect our uh, testimony mm -hmm. in living in this in this uh, world that we're existing in. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this earlier in, in our pre-production meeting as it relates to forgiveness, ah. right? Mm -hmm. If you want to impact the culture, mm -hmm. forgiveness is one of the things that has to be on the top of our list. Yeah. Because if you think about it, if you think about it, uh, being a, being a believer, being a Christian does not mean, of course, that you're perfect. Not at all. Uh, we have our days, right? Yes, we do. And, and we're going to offend sometimes. Yes. And, and we're going to be offended, right? Yes. And the scriptures teach us how to handle uh, forgiveness. Right. For instance, I think the book of Luke, Luke 17 says, if your brother or your sister, your friend, your cousin, mm -hmm. whoever, offends you, mm -hmm. right? Right. And they come to you. Right. 70 times. Lord God. You forgive them. Right? Yes. 
Now, what's the key component in that as it relates to, 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 to what we're trying to do? What's the key component? The, the, the key component in that to me is if mm -hmm. they repent. Right. All right? That's because now, 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 when you think about being offended, right? Which mm -hmm. we want to be offended. Yes. And 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 the person comes to you and asks you for forgiveness and right. and and they repent it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm obligated to forgive them mm -hmm. and place them back at their position that they had, the rights and privileges before the offense, right? Right. So I do that for as many relationship. Times. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. They're God's children. Right. But if they don't repent, mm -hmm. then I'm still obligated to forgive them. Yes. But I just don't forgive them for fellowship. Right. So you don't, you can't come back to that place that you had mm -mm. because because if you haven't repented, there's a good possibility you're gonna go and do that again. Look and worse. <laughs> so 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 so. Uh, how do you deal with forgiveness? How, how do you forgive people? How, 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 what's your uh, uh, motive or measure for forgiveness? Had this conversation today. Okay. And um, the whole concept of forgiveness is a lot of people don't want to forgive because they want the right to be hurt. Yeah. The right to be right, to Hold have on. been wronged. Because look at me, I'm the martyr. Because look at what happened to me. I was doing all these things right, and this person did this, and we want that right. And especially when that person is not repentant. We don't want to forgive, but I, the conversation was forgiveness is not for them; it's for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so people people want to hold other people hostage. Yes. For for an, an, an offense mm -hmm. that occurred. Right. And as we were saying, uh, forg unforgiveness is like me drinking poison mm -hmm. and hoping that it affects yeah. you, right? Right. But the only person that really unforgiveness affects the most right. is the one who's harboring in their heart, right? Absolutely. Because uh, uh, our heart gets so hard, it gets so heavy, it, mm -hmm. we can't, we can't, we can't love, we right. can't talk to people, and hurting people always hurt other people. Right. And hurting people will ruin your testimony quicker than anything. Yes. Because that secret place, I talked about a uh -huh. secret place a couple of nights ago. You did, you did. And, and, and it's important that we keep our secret place right. Uh huh. Because when the pressures of life come, <laughs> whatever's in it is coming out. Whatever's in that secret place is going to come out. Oh, yeah. And if our secret place is bad, our testimony is Look, ruined. Look, it is ruined. You're right. And, you know, unforgiveness does not live alone. It produces bitterness, mm. it produces resentment, mm. it, re it produces guards to where we can't be vulnerable with people because mm -hmm. we reserve the right to be hurt. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we've talked about even in the prayer ministry is you can't be a victim and a victor. You got to pick one. <laughs> well, talk about that. Uh, elaborate on that. What, what does that mean? Well, I'm reserving the right to be hurt. Okay. They did me wrong and right. I want to stay and wallow in that and get people to feel sorry for me. You're playing the victim. Okay. Oh, and, and, and I'm not saying it didn't happen. Yeah. And I'm not saying that what happened was not real. Right. But do we live there yeah. and wear that as a badge? Like, look at me, I was wrong. Yeah. Or do we get past that and grow from it and be victorious yeah. over whatever the situation was? Okay, okay. So, 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 so the victim, the victim, and, and, and the victor mentality. Mm -hmm. That's that's an incredible analogy. Uh, so, if I'm the victim, then I'm always weak. I'm always woe is me. Mm -hmm. Somebody did this to me. It's the perspective that you have of yourself. Yes, but 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 if I'm but if I if I'm walking in victory, mm -hmm. now I've moved on past it. It's not that the offense didn't occur. Right. It's that it's just that I no longer give it permission to hold me in bondage. Right. Is that is that, is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah. So once I get over the fact and and stop giving uh, this pain. Mm -hmm. This offense that occurred, power over, over me life. that it really doesn't have. Right. It's pseudo power. It's yeah. false power. Yeah. Right. It's not even real power. It's not even real power. Yeah. It, it's it's uh it's just it's something that 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 we sleep with. Yeah. We get up with. Uh huh. We wear it and it's heavy. It's something that's illegally there. Yes. And anything that's that's heavy and 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 not meant for us to carry is going to always have a, the opportunity. The potential to hinder our testimony. Absolutely, we can't be at our best. Mm -mm. We can't be at our best. I can't. I can't love my wife 
the way that the Lord wants me to love her. I can't, I can't be in fellowship with my friends. I can't, I can't uh, parent my children. I can't be as productive on my job if that bondage is there, right? Mm -hmm. And all of this is tied up uh, uh, to our testimony. Right. You know, we, we've been called uh, to be the light. Right. The light of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Let our light so shine before men so that they'll see our good works yes. and glorify God. But we, yes. can't, we can't have a testimony that's a powerful one, a winning one, if we're in bondage. They're not going to see our light. They're going to see our issues. And at that point, we become a poor example of what it means to be a carrier of the light that is Christ. Wow. Wow. So... The scripture lets us know again that, uh, and I think we hit on this a minute ago, that uh, we are a chosen people. Yes. We are a royal, royal priesthood. priesthood. So now when we talk about our, our testimony, uh -huh. that royal priesthood language uh -huh. is symbolic of <laughs> we are kingdom representatives. Right. Right? Right. We, we represent a different kingdom. Right. And God has called us out of darkness into and into his marvelous yeah. light uh -huh. and said that he has chosen us. So yeah. it's important that if we walk in this kingdom perspective, right, that we realize that the king is watching, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to have the answer to right. for what you do and how you have represented. Yeah. It's the whole concept of we've been bought with a price. We are not our own. So when I'm being pushed and there's a situation, it's not, oh, Simone went off on somebody. I have to remember, I don't speak for me. Hmm. I speak for him, for the one that I represent. And so that has to keep me in check. Wow. So keep first, my flesh in check. First Peter 2 and 9 reminds us that we have been chosen. Mm -hmm. We have been chosen. Mm -hmm. We are a royal priesthood. We are holy. We are set apart. Yes. We're set apart to have good testimonies. Yes. To be witnesses about the power of this kingdom mm -hmm. that we believe. Right. 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 And to the degree that we believe will be the, uh, to the degree how we operate in our kingdom. Right. One of the reasons why I don't go out and rob banks is because this country has laws against robbing banks. And it does. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons why I try not to do illegal things is because I don't want to be, I don't want to jeopardize my liberties and right, freedoms right. in this constitution, in right. this country, right? Right. It's the same way with God. Our testimony, we, we have a God who is the king of our kingdom. Mm -hmm. And if my testimony is right, mm -hmm. then it gives me more liberty. It gives me more freedom. It gives me uh, more, more, more passions uh, right. to pursue. You know, and I'm not saying that God is just, is, is, is looking down and keeping score. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. Right. But I, we do need to know, we need to be aware that we do have a God who is the king of this kingdom that he's called us to represent him in. Right. How, how do you think a, uh, an ambassador uh, 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 that's in the United States of America, if he went over to, or he or she went over to another country, mm -hmm. and they started walking uh, outside the wheel of the Constitution that the country has given them authority to govern, how do you think the head of the state would react to that? They're going to be dealt with. Because you're a bad representation of who we are. Now, yes. we're going to protect you abroad, however. However. You're going to have to answer to us. Because Ooh, that was so good. Oh, hold, hold, wait, stop right there. That was that was good. Listen, y'all need to pick that one up. That that nugget hit the ground. Make sure you <laughs> pick that one up. So you're gonna be protected abroad, right? Because you belong to us. Because you belong to us, right? But when you get back home, we got to deal with you. We gonna deal with you. So <laughs> we gonna snatch you up from where you are. So the Lord Himself, uh huh, is the King of our kingdom, right? He's already said he's going to protect us. Right. Never leave us, nor forsake us. Right. But he's going to deal with us when he's we get home. He's going to deal with us. Oh, my God. You're, so, talking about, you're talking about protecting your testimony. Right. Wow. Wow. That's major. So, uh, also, also, uh, in, the, in the book of John, chapter 17, verse 15, mm -hmm. Jesus prayed a prayer, and his prayer was, I'm praying, and I, I, I'm asking you, Father, not to take them out of the world, right. but to keep them safe from the evil one. 
That's critical. And and and, and I interpret that to mean Christ is Christ. He he's not taking us out of this world, mm-hmm. right? Because if if he didn't have a plan and a purpose for us, yeah, he'd take us out of this world. But we're here to testify of him to have a right. testimony, right? Right. So if we're going to impact this culture, then our testimony has to be one that's pure and righteous. Right. But he said that he's already prayed for my testimony. Look. Talk about that. And his prayers get answered. All the time. Why does his prayers get answered? Because he does what pleases the Father. Come on. Now you put that up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you think about that scripture. He's like, don't take them out of this. Yeah. They are mine yeah. in the midst of this. And so it's intended for us to be here and to affect where we are. You know, we, we were talking earlier about social media mm-hmm. and this whole concept of being influencers. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that real mm-hmm. quick. We're not called to be influenced. Mm-hmm. We're called to be influencers, mm-hmm. to make a difference where we go, to be the salt amongst that which is dead and decaying. And so when we understand what our purpose is in the situation amongst a group of people, what our assignment is, you know, it, it should become a little clearer how we're supposed to live, what we're supposed to do, and who we represent mm-hmm. and who we will have to answer to. My Lord, as 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 believers, our testimony should be one that's consistent, right? Yes, absolutely. Should be one that's biblical, mm-hmm. should be one that's visible. Yes. So that means that we need to be in these spaces, kind of like we talked about last week, mm-hmm. uh, when it comes down to social justice. Our testimony should be one that uh, leads us to advocate for social justice, right? Right. And, you know, when people hear that term, sometimes social justice, they take it to mean uh, one ethnic group. Mm-hmm. Oh, social justice is, 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 is humanity. It, it's there are laws that God has given and 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 expects for us as humans right. to be able to work through and work by with each other. Right. So anytime we see somebody marginalized, anytime right. we see somebody being mis- misused, mm-hmm. anytime we see somebody uh, that's uh, having their uh, uh, God-given privileges and rights uh, uh, abused, right. then we should be there with a testimony to help them walk through that. Do you agree with that? Yes, yes. I mean, if people are hungry, who are we not to feed them? Come on. If we have the means, if we have the ability, how do you not feed someone who's hungry? How do you not clothe someone who's naked? And I think we have a tendency to try to politicize things way too much. Oh what did Jesus do? What did he speak to us to tell us to do? If we're, if we're supposed to represent him in this world and be light in the midst of darkness, Nobody wants to hear what I'm talking about until they see that I actually care about where they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So being in the world uh, means that you are present and engaged in the everyday activities, relationships, and responsibilities of life. It acknowledges that Christians are not called to isolate themselves, right? right? Mm -hmm. We're not called to be monks, to go up into these caves. We're not a cult. Cover our heads up Mm -hmm. and just sing kumbaya. Right. No. (laughs) They get so left a while. <laughs> We're not to withdraw from society. Instead, they are encouraged to actively participate and contrib- c- contribute to the world that's around us. Absolutely. So anytime that we lose our saltiness, anytime we lose our testimony, the whole world suffers. It does. It suffers. It suffers. So uh, in recap, as we as we close for tonight, uh, I hope that what we've tried to do is we've tried to share the importance mm-hmm. of of protecting our testimony. Yes. You know, when, again, back to the idea of making those little decisions all day, every day, we have to ask ourselves the question, you know, how how am I going to answer when I talk to my boss, mm-hmm. how will I answer for how I responded in this situation? And I mean, I know that's a whole lot that's said right there, but it's the mindset. It's like, okay, I can cut this corner and do something that's technically unethical, or I could do it the right way. Somebody's watching what I'm doing. Let me do the right thing. Wow. Wow. So, hey, friends, uh, I pray that tonight you have been given just one nugget, if nothing else. Uh, to teach us how to be in this world, but not of this world. 
how to uh, uh, have activities and relationships every day uh, with people in the world, but yeah. not necessarily being of the world. Right. How we do not have to bring anything of secular uh, value mm -hmm. and try and make it sacred and holy when right. God has said it's not. Right. So I'm hopefully that we'll stay salty mm -hmm. because if we don't stay salty, if we lose our testimony, then how is the world going to be seasoned and flavored with the love of Christ, right? Right. So we need to stay salty, and, and our testimony uh, needs to, to, to stay clean. Yes. You don't need to hear of Pastor Joe Fields uh, down in the dirt. <laughs> right. You don't need to hear that. Not at all. Now, I'm not a perfect man. You're not a perfect woman by no. any means. Mm -mm. And, and if something like that were to happen, Lord, I pray that you, you show us how to be humble and forgive and move forward. Yes. But we, we definitely uh, need to, to make sure that, that we're staying clean. So as we close, mm -hmm. uh, thank you for being a, a part of our broadcast thank tonight. I uh, can't, to, can't wait to have you back again. And we're going to just walk through this thing. Yes. want to give a big shout out to our production team uh, for all that they do. God bless y'all. And we can't wait. Hey, don't forget, buckle up because we're moving forward. Yeah. Thank you for being a part of our broadcast tonight. We pray that in some way you found a way to protect your testimony in this culture that we're living in. And again, we want to thank you for being a part of this podcast. Like, share, uh, and uh, subscribe to this podcast. Also, next week, you do not want to be a uh, miss next week. Next week is going to be incredible. It's going to be a blast. Uh, my daughter. Uh, Courtney is going to be a part of our podcast on next week, and the topic is going to be uh, how doing good uh, turns bad. I died, but God. It's going to be Courtney's own testimony, her own story. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what is going to become of her, but her journey, her story is incredible, and can nobody tell it like she can? So next week? It's going to be great. So buckle up. We're going. <laughs> We're moving forward. <laughs> Thank you.